Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 3, focusing on the subtopic of 3.1 galvanic cell. We're going to focus on tutorial question 1, question 3, question 4, and question 8 respectively. Without any further ado, let us start. So for tutorial question 1, a galvanic cell consists of an aluminium as an anode electrolyte in 1.0 molar aluminium nitrate, a plumbum as cathode electrode in 1.0 molar plumbum nitrate, and a KCL salt bridge. So, based on this information given, we have to draw and label the cell diagram. So, the diagram that we will be imagining is to be something like this, where the electrode going to be separated into two separate beakers, and the one that level here is known as the aluminium acting as the anode, and it is immersed in the electrolyte of 1.0 molar of aluminium trinitrate. Meanwhile, the aluminium is going to be connected with another electrolyte, another electrode uh, known as plumbum acting as a cathode. And this is immersed in the electrolyte of 1.0 molar of plumbum nitrate. And this circuit is going to be connected with a voltmeter. In order to complete the circuit, uh, we will be having a salt bridge made up of the potassium chloride. And the ions will be allowed to move freely here from the salt bridge K plus and Cl minus in order to maintain the electrical neutrality and to prevent excess build up of charges on both sides of electrolyte. Before uh, also, you have to ensure that you will label the electron here uh, where the electron flows go from the anode goes to cathode. All right. And as mentioned, the function of salt bridge is to first completing the circuit so that it can make a round circle here. And second is to maintain electrical neutrality by allowing the potassium plus ion and the chloride minus ion to move between the two electrolytes and maintain the electrical neutrality and prevent excess buildup of charges. All right. And for number three here, we have to write the cell notation. So, in order to write the cell notation, the overall cell notation, we will need to start with the half cell. So for aluminium, which at the anode, it will be oxidized in order to form aluminium 3 plus aqueous plus, releasing two more, 3 mole of electron. Meanwhile, at cathode, the plumbum 2 plus from the electrolyte will accept 2 electron, which is in aqueous state, will become plumbum solid. So this happening at the cathode. And uh, in order to make the overall cell reaction, we need to ensure that our electron here need to be the same so that we can cut it off. Therefore, for equation at anode, we need to multiply it by 2. Meanwhile, the equation at cathode, we need to multiply it by 3. So if we were to multiply this equation, we will get 2 aluminium solid goes to 2 aluminium 3 plus aqueous plus 6 electron. Meanwhile, at cathode, if we were to multiply it by 3, we will get 3 plumbum 2 plus aqueous plus 6 electron goes to 3 plumbum solid. So, as what you can see here, 6 electron here and 6 electron here can be cancelled out. Hence, what left is 2 aluminium solid plus 3 Pb2 plus aqueous goes to 2 aluminium 3 plus aqueous and 3 mole of plumbum solid. So that's the overall cell reaction. Now, we have to calculate the standard cell potential for this reaction. Alright, so in order to calculate the standard cell potential, we have to use the formula of E0 cell equal to E0 cathode minus E0 anode. So the reaction that happens at cathode is the plumbum 2 plus uh, and it undergoes reduction to form plumbum solid. So the plumbum 2 plus here will have the value of negative 0 0.13. So we can substitute that in here. And the end not going to be the aluminium, where it's going to be negative 1.66 volt. All right. So the at cathode, it's going to be negative 0 0.13 minus the one the reaction at end not negative 1.66 as given here. So remember, in order to use this formula, we have to use the SRP values. So the SRP values here means 
it is the reduction potential as given in the equation. So from 3 plus going to AL0. So because it undergo reduction. Plumbum 2 plus to plumbum 0. Alright? The formal, the formal charge. Alright? So needs to be in the SRP values. So once you do the math here, you will get E not cell equal to positive 1.534. 1 so it means that the reaction is spontaneous. Now for question number four, which electrode electrode will increase in mass? So here, uh, as what you can see, um, at the cathode part, the plumbum two plus aqueous from the electrolyte will be reduced to form plumbum solid. So you know that at cathode there will be a build up of plumbum solid at the electrode. So the plumbum are the one that gonna increase in mass not the aluminium because aluminium solid here will become ions so it's gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner meanwhile at cathode here it will get thicker okay so we can say that cathode, cathode which is the plumbum uh, will increase in mass because plumbum 2 plus ion in the solution undergo reduction to form plumbum atoms or plumbum solids that deposit on the cathode. Alright, now let's move on to the next question, which is question number three. So, based on the cell notation below, which is argentum solid to argentum plus aqueous, so this reaction happens at anode. Meanwhile, the double line here means bridge, and here means the reaction occurs at cathode. So, here is oxidation, and this one is reduction. M3 plus become M0. This one is oxidation from 0 to positive 1. Alright, so we have to write a balanced chemical equation for the spontaneous reaction. So at N0, argentum solid to argentum plus releasing one mole of electron. So this is oxidation. Meanwhile, at cathode, M3 plus will accept three electron in order to form M solid. Okay, and this process is known as reduction. Okay, and in, in order to write a balanced chemical equation, we need to ensure that our number of electrons is the same. So we have to multiply the equation at a node to be times 3 so that we can cancel out the 3 electrons. So once I do that, we will get 3 argentum solid produces 3 argentum plus aqueous plus 3 electrons. So the 3 electrons here can be cancelled out and we will we can combine this equation together so that we can get the overall cell reaction to be 3 argentum solid plus 3 plus m3 plus aqueous produces 3 argentum plus aqueous and ms solid all right so what's on the product side going to be at the product side what's in the reactant side going to be at the reactant side now for question number two uh, they ask us to name the oxidizing agent so the oxidizing agent here means it is the species that undergoes reduction. Okay, so from the equation here, the species that undergoes reduction is M3+. So, the species that undergo reduction is the oxidizing agent. Okay, so it's going to be M3+, not M. Alright, because it needs to be the species that undergoes reduction. So in this case, M3 plus undergoes reduction to form M solid. Okay, so you have to specify it as M3 plus. Now, for question number three, they, we were asked to calculate the E naught cell of M3 plus to M. So it is the reaction at cathode, as you can see here, M3 plus into M. M3 plus going to M. So in order to do that, we need to use the formula of E not cell equal to E not cathode minus E not anode. So our E not cell here is positive 1.00. So we can substitute that in here. Our E not cathode, cathode is the thing that we need to find out, and our E not anode is given here as positive 0 0.80. So we can substitute that in. Okay, and we can bring this thing this term to the left hand side and lastly we will get E naught of cathode M3 plus to M going to be positive 
1.804. Alright? So for tutorial question 5, we have to predict whether ferrum 3 plus can oxidize I minus to I2 under standard state condition. So I minus to I2, if they were to be oxidized, it's gonna happen at anode. And this one gonna be the reaction gonna be at cathode. So in order uh, for us to predict whether this reaction can occur or not, we have to find the E naught cell, which is E naught cathode minus E naught anode. So if the E naught cell is positive, means that it is a spontaneous reaction. Okay, so if you were to write the reaction that happens at anode, uh, I minus gonna be oxidized to form I2 and balance it out plus two electron here. However, when we using this equation, which is E naught cell minus E naught cathode minus E naught anode, we have to write it in terms of the standard reduction potential, as I mentioned earlier. So that is why we flip the equation because we want it to be, um, we want it to be in the reduction state so that we can use this formula. All right, and at cathode, it's gonna be Fe3 plus accepting one one mole of electron to form ferrum two plus aqueous, and the value is given here as positive zero point seven seven. Now, we can find the E naught cell, which is E naught cathode minus E naught anode where our E0 cathode here is positive 0 0.77 and our E0 anode here is positive 0 0.53. So negative minus positive 0 0.53 and once we do the maths, we will get positive 0 0.24 volt. And hence, we can say that when the E0 cell is positive, Fe3 plus can oxidize I minus to I2 under the standard state condition. All right, now let's move on to the next question which is tutorial equation 8. So the magnitude of the standard reduction potential of the two metal X and Y are as follows. Y2 plus accept two mole of electron to form Y with this value, which is 0 0.34. X plus accept two mole of electron to form X with this cell potential, which is 0 0.25 volt. Where it mentioned here that the magnitude of E0 only, the, only representing the magnitude, not the sign. Okay? And we have to know whether it's positive or negative by looking at the um, information here. So as what they say, when the half cell of X and Y are connected, so when both of these are connected, the electron flows from X to Y. Electron flows from X into Y. So we know that X here will be acting as the anode. And our Y here will accept electron and it will act acting as a cathode. And all other information is that when X is connected to a SHE, so SHE is a standard hydrogen electrode which has a reference value of 0, 0.00 volt, electron flows from X to SHE. So when X is connected with SHE, electron will flow from X into SHE. So you know that when it costs a value of 0, 0.0 volt and electron goes from here to there, you know that it will be acting as the anode. And cathode must have a positive value. So the anode here will be, carry, will be carrying a negative value, which is negative 0.25 volt. So we know that from the data from the information given here, you know that you know that the E naught at cathode will be 0 0.34, which is positive. Meanwhile, here are going to be negative 0 0.25 volt. Alright. Now let's put that into word. So electron flow from X to SHE. So it means that X here undergo oxidation. Hence we can say that it occurs at a naught and the value of E naught of X2 plus into X is negative. Other information is that electron flows from X to Y, so means that X undergo oxidation at a naught and ox. And EX2 plus into X is more negative than Y2 plus and Y. 
okay, more negative, all right, true. And hence, we can say that E not Y2 plus going to Y is more positive, all right. And now, we need to determine the standard EMF. EMF here means E not cell content consisting of X and Y electrode. So in order to find E not cell, we're going to use the formula of E not cathode minus E not anode, where our E not cathode here is positive 0 0.34 minus the at X to minus negative 0 0.25 volt here. All right, so our cathode is Y2 plus and our anode is X2 plus going to X. All right, so be really careful with the negative signs here. So negative, negative, and our N0 here is negative 0 0.25. So we're going to insert it, it here. So once we do the math, we will get E0 cell to be positive 0 0.594. All right, I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.